Hello and welcome. My name is Teresa. Thanks for joining me. Today I have brought back one of my favorite. It is a retired stamp set, but it's still my favorite one for making baby cards. I can't help it. I just really, really, really like the little rabbit. So today we're going to make a baby card for a little girl using the Fable Friends stamp set. Now to incorporate some of the newer products, I pulled out the You're a Peach designer series paper. It's all two-sided and the one we're going to use today is this side. So the front looks like this. It has those beautiful peaches and I almost hate to cut this up but I had already used another piece for another project so I'm not actually going to cut up this 12 by 12 sheet. And then at the end of the video I will show you the little card I made for a boy using this side of this sheet of paper, okay? So using the Europe Peach and our Retired Fable Friends, I'm gonna show you two cards you can make for upcoming baby showers or the birth of a new baby, whatever the case may be. Now today I'm a little not as prepared as I like to be. I'm gonna go through some of the steps with you guys more in person for those of you who might be new to card making. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a piece. This is our petal pink, does our excuse me, our petal pink cardstock. And with the trimmer, I want to cut it halfway down the center. Now this is eight and a half, so I'm going to cut it down the center at four and a quarter. Okay, so just line it up. And with the blade, we cut it. The other piece of paper can go off to the side. Turning it over at five and a half, because this length is 11, so halfway would be five and a half. I want to score it. Don't want to use the cutting blade. I want to pull up the scoring blade from the back side. This starts the fold for you. It does make things a lot easier. Now, before I put that away, I want to bring out a piece of our mossy meadow paper and I'm going to cut two pieces from this that measure four by five and a quarter. So on the long side, I'm going to go ahead and cut it at five and a quarter. Put this piece off to the side, and then I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to cut two pieces at four inches. Because again, I need two pieces that measure four by five and a quarter. I like to turn it upside down so I keep the cut side, just one side with the cut. All right. Save scrap papers, you never know when you're going to need them. Okay, so those are those two pieces that I need. Now, from the designer series paper, I do need to cut this down just a little bit more. So, I want this to be, since this is five and a quarter, I want this to be five inches. I'm just coming in a quarter. Save that. And then, because this measures four inches, I want to come in, sorry, let me do this to where you can see it. Because I cut this at four inches, I want this to come in at three and three quarter inches. Just so everything comes in a quarter of an inch. Okay, you with me so far? Good. Now, for this, I want to cut a smaller piece of this, and I want this to measure two and a quarter by three and a quarter. So, let's do this one first, two and one quarter. And you'll see where this will be used in just a moment by three and one quarter. See, it's all coming together. Then I do need another piece, and I already have these pre cut because I keep a stack of these pre cut at um, four by five and a quarter, but I need to make it even a little bit smaller. This one also has to come in at five inches, so I'll just turn that one down. And instead of four inches, I want it to be three and three quarters. So let me go ahead and slice that down. Now, are that all my cut pieces? Bum, bada, bum, 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 bada, bum, 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 bum. Yeah, I do need one more piece of white paper, but we'll do that after we stamp the impression. Okay, so we've got all our pieces except for that one. Let's go ahead and do our fold. And again, we say this in every video if you have a bone folder, it really does help to press and really push down on that crease. On the inside, I'm doing this a little bit differently. Normally, I would just put down a sheet of white cardstock and be done with it, and that is fine. But for this particular card, I want it to have the mossy meadow. So let's go ahead and put some tape on this one. This is that Stampin' Seal Plus. You know I love it. 
can't help it. It's my it's my thing. I think it's got a really let me make sure I have a flat surface. It's got such a nice strong bond. And for me, there are certain cards that I like to think because I did it, everybody does it. But I think there are some cards that just get kept even longer, some really special occasion cards. Now, yes, I am that mother who has in the basement every single card I received at both baby showers for both children and every single card I got for their first year when the baby was born and every first year celebration. I have them all. Now, when they finally take them, because they both are out of the house with their own lives, when they finally take them, they will probably wind up in the trash. But whatever, at least I have them. This one, I'm going to go ahead and assemble it. can go ahead and I can place our DSP right on the Mossy Meadow. Just going to warn you all in advance, our little friend Leo has come into the room. Oh boy, don't hop up here, Leo. Please don't. He doesn't normally hop up, but you never know with cats. Cats kind of have a mind of their own. I know it is a shame to cover that. Look how gorgeous that is. But like I said, this was already from some, another card I made. So let's try to even that up. I'm just eyeballing it. Now for this, I do want to use some ribbon. And this is where I wasn't 100% certain. I still have, this stuff lasts a long time, the organdy striped ribbon. And I wanted to put something there, but I'm also thinking I might want to double it up. And this, I still have some of this metallic edge ribbon. Both of them are done in the petal pink. So I'm thinking this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to layer it that way because I want some pop and pizzazz. So the first thing, let's go ahead and put down the striped organdy ribbon. I cut it all the way through, that would be fantastic. And again, I eyeball it. Some people, it has to be exactly center. You do what you feel most comfortable doing. I just kind of eyeball it for the center. That looks centered to me. And then we're gonna pull it around and just apply it there, okay? Then I am gonna put a little bit more tape because I don't want anything to come apart. And I'm going to take this metallic ribbon, yes, right here. See, it's great, there's really no side, so you, it's almost like you, there's no losing here. And let's get that to stick to that tape. Oh, oh, I didn't get any on there. Well, that's not gonna help. Whoops, come on. It's not wanting to leave some. That's not good, so tell you what I'm gonna do instead. Always have a little piece of scotch tape. For whatever reason, it doesn't wanna to stick to that. That's okay, it can be finicky. We're gonna work around it. It's not gonna stop me, that's for sure. And let's go this way. I know, feel how strong it is, but for some reason that uh, Stampin' Seal Plus was just not having it today. That worked on my other card, I don't know, anyhow. It's okay, we move on. So now that I have that done, I can go ahead and put it on the front of the card, the wrong one. So let's get our stamp and seal plus. See, look, it's coming out beautifully. So I'm not exactly sure it was having a moment. Oops, now this time it's doing that, see? What the what? Come on, you never misbehave. Never. Why are you doing this? Anyhow, so I want this to go this way. So we're gonna already, we're gonna go ahead, not already, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna apply it. We are so close to being done, but we do have some stamping to do. So let's just set that off to the side for now. And I'm pulling out my scrap white paper because you know I like to keep some of that on hand. Now, I do know that my finished size, my finished width will need to be two inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that first. Okay, let's put that in there, behave yourself. There we go, pop that in my scrap pile. And I want it to be three inches. So it's two inches by three inches. And that is a big enough sheet of paper to put the bunny on. Now the bunny, I want to stamp him, sorry for reaching over you. I want to use the gray granite and I already have the stamp out and he's on an acrylic block. So let's go ahead and stamp him up. 
this is where I tend to go maybe a little too fast and I'm trying not to. I'm always aware of how long the videos are. And I do try to make the videos the way I want to see them. Not too much talking, just get it done. But every now and then you get to a part where if I rush it, it's not going to turn out right for you guys. And I want you to see, I want the finished product to look good. So let's just, I'm going to take, if you can't see it, I apologize, but I want to be able to look down on it. Let's see if I placed them in a good spot. Oh yeah, that is good. So now let's go ahead and close up my gray granite. And again, this is just a stamp scrubber I got at a local craft store. This is a baby wipe, using the heck out of it. It had dried out, I just poured some more water on it. Now that we have our upstairs bathroom renovated and access to the sink again, I can just do that. It saves some money. So now I do want to color him up. And I've got my markers out here. I want to use the, actually I want to use the, sorry for the noise, sorry for the one in front of you. I have the petal pink, but I want to pull out, oops, I got the wrong one again. Only I can do that. So I keep my markers in these little tubs I got from the dollar store. And they have them labeled. Put that off to the side. So I want to use the light petal pink marking. I'm sorry, it's the blend, the stamping blend. And I just want to give his ears, there you go, a hint. Then using the light gray granite, I'm going to go ahead and color in my bunny. Isn't he cute? I just can't believe we don't have him anymore. Stamping up. Bring him back, please. I don't know. We There are plenty of other adorable stamp sets for babies. Don't get me wrong. But this one just has my heart. I think you all know exactly which children's book this reminds me of. I won't say it. But it's one of my favorite books to give new mommies and new daddies. So this all just, this is my jam. This works for me, I like it. Now using the dark gray granite, let's go ahead and make this side of his, his thighs, his little lower body. Let's make that a little darker gray. Okay. And see by using the gray granite stamp or ink to stamp on the image, it just, it doesn't give those harsh lines, and I like that. I like the baby cards to be a little soft. Pulling out the light petal pink, I wanna just dab a little right there on the nose. Yep, right there. So cute. Now for him, for her, excuse me, it's a her, I think I'm gonna go back to the dark petal pink, and that's what I'm gonna color her little sweater in. Yes, there we go. I like that. And it's so funny. I know you're probably thinking, Teresa, that does not look pink. You're right. It has more of a, I'm not exactly sure why it's called pink, but it does tend to have, to me, it leans a little bit more towards a peach color. But that's okay. That's what it's called. Isn't she adorable? Now let's go ahead and I'm going to place that there. But before I do, I'm gonna go ahead and back up a second. I do want to cut, I do wanna use this stamping, the Darling Baby. Pull out a piece of, whoops, that's not my scrap white paper. Hmm. Pull out a piece from my scrap white paper. That's a good seat size, we'll do that. And I think I wanna put Darling Baby, that kind of gets lost there. Now I know if I use the petal pink, that's too light. So I'm gonna use a mossy meadow because that's the that's the base color we're using on the card. So I do wanna use that. Okay. I wonder if I can get that even a little thicker. Let's just try. Why not? Let me see if I can get that a little thicker. Nope, doesn't want to. Okay, that's fine. It will still work. Then I had some choices, some decisions to make, and I wasn't sure which dye I wanted to use to for that, but I'm gonna use the same one I used for the little boy card, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, typically, you're right, I have these done ahead of time. I apologize, I don't have this done ahead of time, so I gotta run over to my big shot. I will be as quick as I can. 
but keep in mind, I do have to cut two pieces. Don't go anywhere. I am going to come back. One piece is cut. And just like that, it's time to cut the other piece. Running the second one through the big shot for right now. Okay, let me grab it. Just come over here with it. Not wasting any time. There we go. So I have the two pieces that I want cut. Now, for these, I'm going to finish, put the finishing touches on. I'm going to run a couple of pieces of my stamp and seal. I'm going to offset this. There we go. And then I do want to put down stamp and seal plus on this guy. Because I don't want it to go anywhere, just in case this new mommy and daddy choose to hold on to it. Let me center this. Up, 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 up. Oh, I have some cute embellishments, but of course, I don't want to just embellish. Let me pull out what I have left. All right, that's pretty well used. Do I have enough? Yes. So using our stamping dimensionals, I am going to raise this. Now, just so you know, just because you raise it on stamping dimensionals, you can still put this through the post. So you just put your stamp on it and it will mail without issue. It should be fine. I have never heard where mine's had an issue. My, uh, the pick tool, this is very helpful, especially if you have um, thicker nails or, you know, enhanced nails or artificial nails. I do have to hold this because I want to see where it's going. You know what? I'm going to make this one a little bit different from my other card. And let's go ahead and remove this guy. And let's put Darling Baby down here. Oh, I wish I was a little small, lower. I don't know that I can move it. Oh, can I get it pulled up without ruining it? Let me see. I'm going to try. Because I wanted a little room between the two. That's better. There you go. Now we want to decorate her up. Okay, and I was thinking, I wasn't exactly sure. So I know I want to put some pearls on. And I'm going to use the big pearls this time. Come here, big pearl. And I think I'm going to do them right there, same place as the other card. And I will show you the card I did for the baby boy. I don't know, I just like pearls. I think they're so elegant, they're so pretty. Then let's move this off to the side. And then I still have some of these faceted gems. And I'm thinking for her, ooh yeah, these might be a little big, but that's okay. Only you and I know they're too big. We're still gonna position them. I can make this work. I have every confidence. Look at that. Could we want a little bling? There you go. Isn't that cute? So look what we did. We took a designer series paper from Euro Peach. We pulled out one of our retired stamp sets. We used some gray granite and we used some mossy meadow. I'm gonna put this in the picture for you so you can go ahead and take a picture. I'll give you a second to do that. Let me pull in all the other key components. And then, as promised, I will show you the little boy card that I did. One more key component that we used. So there you go. I think that's a good screenshot for you guys. Get my hand out of the way. So go ahead. I, have, I find it helpful to take a screenshot. There you go. So now I want to pull in the other card I did that I feel goes really well for a baby boy. You ready for it? You ready? So using the balmy blue cardstock. Look at him, isn't he cute? Isn't he just as adorable? Let me hold them up so you can see them. Now I don't know about you or where you work, but COVID, everyone being working from home, we have seen a little and heard about a lot of babies being born. So I definitely have use for my cards and it's great to be able just to go up to the table, make a card, Think about the mommy to be, think about the babies that are coming and just, you know, 
send out positive, wonderful thoughts for them. So anyhow, this is the part where I ask you if you enjoyed this video to please go ahead and give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. And if you have not subscribed to our channel, please consider doing so. And while you're at it, if you click on that bell icon and turn on your notifications, you will be notified the next time we post a video. So thank you for watching and until the next time, happy stamping.